Cowboy rides again, Cerrone set for two-fight return. In a shocking turn of events, Donald Cowboy Cerrone is dusting off his gloves and stepping back into the octagon for more fights. The legendary UFC veteran, known for his toughness and fan favorite status, has been away from the sport for some time. This unexpected announcement has sent the MMA world into a frenzy as fans eagerly await Cowboy's return to action. I want to go back and get two more fights. When I retired, I told you I was getting my hair done and getting on steroids. So number 50, I've been sitting on my mind for a while. So I've been working with Transcend the last two years, taking TRT, a bunch of peptides. Now we got a protocol for all you people like, oh, what if you get on it, you can't ever come off? Well, I now have to come off and piss clean. Fighting a few months. So watch this. <laughs> White on Cerrone return. I hate it, love him, hate that. Dana White has made it clear that he is not in favor of Donald Cerrone's comeback. The UFC president expressed his mixed feelings about the decision stating that while he loves Cerrone as a fighter, he believes it's time for him to hang up the gloves. White's comments have added another layer of intrigue to Cerrone's return, as fans and analysts speculate about the potential challenges he may face. Cowboy Cerrone said he's coming out of retirement. I he hate wants, it. He wants two more fights. I hate it. Uh, is that, is that, is that still Love him, hate that. He retired, it's just, what, what, for what? What's left to prove, you know? If you want to make money, let's figure something else out. And, and I wanted to ask about, you know, when guys retire, they retire for a reason. They don't just retire because they, they, they retire because they know it's over. You know it is. So I, I think that not just this sport, but any professional sport is hard to walk away from. White slams rankings. Morons strike again. Dana White is livid with the latest UFC rankings update, calling it a complete joke. The UFC president took particular issue with Khalil Roundtree's ranking despite a recent impressive fight. White has scheduled a meeting to address the rankings issue and plans to shake things up within the ranking committee. All right, here we go. I know it's reversed, can't see it on here, but the moron strike again. Uh, Khalil Roundtree fights that badass fight against Pereira and the morons rank him number eight. Keep him at number eight. Literally this week, I have a meeting to try to fix the rankings and get all these know-nothing, do-nothing mother out of it. So hopefully this week I get this fixed. Have a great day, everybody. If you look at uh, who Pereira has beat, right, and how he's beat him leading up to this fight, he was winning on the scorecards when he got stopped. He was ahead on the scorecards, stayed in the pocket, put on one of the greatest fights anybody's ever seen and he stays at number eight it's just i can't i can't handle the confidence i can't take it anymore it's driving me crazy and i can't let people that i don't believe know what the, they're talking about deal with the rankings anymore i just can't do it i have to figure out a solution tomorrow i have a meeting uh with a group of people that are coming to me saying they have the solution to this problem and god i hope they're right because i'm going to change it the, the media will no longer control the rankings in the UFC. UFC rejects internal rankings, don't want bias. In a surprising move, the UFC has announced that it will not be creating its own internal rankings. Dana White explained that the decision was made to avoid potential bias and ensure the rankings remain fair and objective. This announcement has sparked debate among fans and analysts, as some question whether the UFC can truly maintain objectivity without having its own ranking system. unbiased you, you, you try to be, it's impossible. And, and, and I'll be honest with you, there are some fighters I don't like. There's fighters that I really like. And there's things that are good for the business. There's things that you might think, I don't want at in our hands at all. Not mine, not Sean's, not Mick's, not Hunter's, nobody's. There, there has to be a third party that, that, that 
or AI or something that does the rankings. It's impossible not to be biased. And I believe that there's bias with the media too. It's impossible not to be biased. So, um. White hyped over Neymar collectible. I know who this guy is. Dana White has revealed that he recently pulled a Neymar card from a pack. The UFC president expressed his excitement over the rare collectible, showcasing his knowledge of soccer and his interest in sports memorabilia. White's enthusiasm for the card has added a touch of levity to the often serious world of MMA. Go slow, you'll see. Get the fuck out. Oh no. I don't know a lot about fucking soccer. I already just saw you. I don't know soccer. <laughs> I don't the side now. Me too. I feel like I'm insane. Other side. Other side. Other, other side. side. Yep. So you'll see if it's if it's gold, it should be a one of one. That looks like a one of one. Right? It's oh gold. Oh my it's, god. There's only <laughs> everything is. Get the fuck. Hey, listen to me. You know me. This isn't fucking rigged at all. We uh. just have this box. I wasn't gonna open the fucking box. I brought up the soccer thing. Is it that Neymar guy? Oh my god. No way. No way. Legit, right? I know who this guy is. How much is this card worth? I'm gonna guess off rip probably 10 ish. This card's worth $10,000. Ngannou threatens to reveal UFC pay details. Francis Ngannou has responded to Dana White's recent comments about his earnings after leaving the UFC. Ngannou has threatened to publicly disclose his UFC pay if White continues to make disparaging remarks. The former heavyweight champion is clearly unhappy with the way his departure from the UFC was handled and is prepared to take action to protect his reputation. And if this continues, if, if he wants, I can bring up all the numbers. I have all the numbers. You okay? I have uh, the all the receipts. You want to bring yeah. them up now or? I have numbers. You want now or later? No, let's keep it again. I don't like to bring numbers up, but if I need to, I will. White, what do I care about Ngannou's PFL debut? Dana White has shown no interest in Francis Ngannou's upcoming fight in the Professional Fighters League (PFL). When asked for his thoughts on the matchup, White simply replied, What do I care? His dismissive attitude towards Ngannou's new venture has further fueled the ongoing tension between the former UFC champion and the promotion. I see this weekend, uh, Francis Ngannou is making his uh, MMA debut with PFL. I just want to get your thoughts on that. And What do I care? <laughs> Thank you. Ngannou to step into PFL cage for first time. Francis Ngannou is officially making his debut in the Professional Fighters League PFL. The former UFC heavyweight champion is set to face Renan Ferreira in the main event of the PFL's season finale. Ngannou's arrival in the PFL has created a wave of excitement and anticipation among fans as they eagerly await his performance in his new promotion. Hamzat's speed unleashed. New training footage shows dominance. Hamzat Shemaev has been showing off his incredible speed and athleticism in recent training footage. The fighter's explosive movements have left fans and analysts in awe as they anticipate his next fight with even more excitement. Hamzat's dominance in the gym has only fueled speculation about his potential to become a future champion. Tapuria boldly predicts early KO of Holloway. Ilya Tapuria has made a bold prediction ahead of his upcoming fight against Max Holloway. The star has guaranteed that he will finish Holloway within the first seconds of their matchup. Tapuria's confidence and brashness have added an extra layer of intrigue to the highly anticipated fight, as fans and analysts wonder if he can back up his bold claims. Fight, I'm gonna point the ground and we'll see, we'll see what, what, what he's going to do. I will be in the middle of the of the octagon, so let's bang, bro. If you're ready, I was born ready. Well, so so you that you are predicting this. You are saying first ten of seconds course. you're going to walk to the middle of the cage. First you're point ten down. seconds, I'm going to point the the mm -hmm. the middle of the octagon, and I will stay there. I want to give the best and the most excited ten seconds in the UFC history to the fans. They deserve it. 
Tapuria warns critics, F you everyone. Ilya Tapuria has unleashed a verbal assault on those who are doubting his chances against Max Holloway. The UFC fighter has warned his critics that he will prove them wrong and has vowed to not even acknowledge them after he defeats Holloway. Tapuria's fiery rhetoric has only intensified the buildup to the fight as fans and analysts eagerly await the outcome. We, we're gonna find out right. if he's, a, he's the BMF or he's, he's a p like everyone who is predicting that I'm going to lose to Max Holloway. All the UFC fighters, I, I watch the, the predictions of all the UFC fighters, they, they are predicting that he's going to beat me. All the bombs, you're going after, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna knock him out. Don't even tell me hello if you see me around. Who's, who's, yourself, everyone. who's doing this? Who's saying this? Who's picking against you? I don't know many, many fighters. I don't even, even wanna, wanna tell you the names okay. because I don't wanna give uh, importance about them. Tapuria fires back at Conor McGregor, I'm more African Ganu. Ilya Tapuria has responded to Conor McGregor's recent comment, suggesting that he is more Spanish than Tapuria. The UFC fighter has fired back at Conor, claiming that he is more African than Francis Ngannou and more Spanish than him. Tapuria's witty retort has added a humorous twist to the ongoing rivalry between the two fighters. I saw him in Marbella, and I'm sure you saw this as well. He said he's more Spanish yeah, he than you. Yeah, he went to Marbella. He's more Spanish, yeah. I also, when when I see myself in the mirror below my waist, I also think sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm more African than Francis Ngannou. Dustin Poirier reveals near altercation with Conor McGregor. Dustin Poirier has revealed that he narrowly avoided a confrontation with Conor McGregor at a recent event. The former UFC interim lightweight champion stated that the situation was tense and that a fight was imminent. Poirier's comments have reignited speculation about a potential rematch between the two rivals. So I was walking over to their um, booth to meet some people and Connor was behind me apparently. Wow. And uh, my agent was walking behind me and he grabs me. I, so Connor might've saw the back of my head. I don't know, I didn't see him. He grabs my shoulders and he says, hey, go this way to the right, to the right. So we start walking to the right. I'm like, the booth is right there. We start walking to the right. And then he, and then once we get clear of everybody, he's like, "Dude, we almost had a big problem." Oh, and man. that's that's what that was. What do you think would have happened if you saw each other? What do you think happens? I don't know, bro. We just have such a long history. He said some some foul things. You you ever watch Family Guy? Yeah, yeah. You know when Peter and and the chicken run into each other? Mm, tell me about it. They freaking go on this crazy fight. They're falling down hills. They're fighting for an hour. You know. That's what would have happened. You think so? You think you guys would have fought? Yeah, for sure. Because of what he said about your family? Yeah, and just, every, just everything we have over the past however many years since our first fight. Poirier targets Louisiana for retirement fight. Dustin Poirier has expressed his desire to fight Justin Gaethje in Louisiana for his retirement fight. The UFC veteran wants to end his career in the state where he began his journey in MMA. Poirier has also hinted at the possibility of fighting Nate Diaz at 170 pounds for his final bout, adding another intriguing option to his retirement plans. Me and Gates are one and one. I would love to do the last fight with him in Louisiana. Oh. Our first fight was in his backyard. Our second fight was in neutral, neutral ground. The third one, let's do it in my backyard. That would be sick. You versus Hooker would be sick too. That first fight was incredible. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, you versus Diaz is still the one I want to see. I don't know if I, I feel well, like- Well, get him, yeah, I'll do that one. I'll do that one in Louisiana. That would be incredible. Get Diaz in the UFC and I'll meet him at 170. Poirier may fight more times before retiring. Dustin Poirier has revealed that he had a productive meeting with the UFC discussing his future plans. The UFC veteran has indicated that he may fight more times before retiring. Poirier's decision to extend his career has come as a surprise to many, as fans and analysts were expecting him to retire sooner. I will fight again. It's just how this thing unfolds is, is gonna, we'll see when I do retire. It could be Uno Mas, could be Dos Mas. I had a good meeting at the UFC headquarters. I was out there with Celsius at a trade show and uh, I had a good meeting. So I could come back and then, so my goal is to get a fight get an event here in Louisiana, whether that's Lafayette, Louisiana, New Orleans. I want to lay the gloves down where I started fighting. That's my, my goal.
um, you know, just opponent availability, what makes sense. And these guys, behind the scenes, people don't understand this. These, these shows are booked a year in advance. You know, like, I think a few months ago we were speaking about it and he was already booked his pay-per-views all the way through August or something like that. So it's hard to just throw things together last second. It takes a lot of planning with these, there's a lot of moving parts with these big UFC events. But my goal is to take my gloves off in Louisiana and retire home. Conor McGregor's reaction to avoiding Poirier revealed. Conor McGregor's reaction to his near encounter with Dustin Poirier at the recent event has been revealed. The UFC star's response has added another layer of intrigue to the ongoing rivalry between him and Poirier. You see how Dustin went the other way? You see how Dustin walked the other way? He's right behind me. No way. Walked on this side right there. He's right there. Moicano, I can beat anyone except Poirier. Renato Moicano has made a bold claim about his abilities in the UFC's lightweight division. The Brazilian fighter has stated that he can defeat any opponent in the division except for Dustin Poirier. Moicano's confidence has caught the attention of fans as they question whether he can truly back up his claims. Dustin Poirier saying he, he got a fight. I don't really care. It doesn't really matter. You'd of fight course, Dustin? Never, You'd no, fight? No, 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 no it's your no. teammate. Yeah, yeah. No, he's my teammate. And not only that, what's the point of going in a fight that I know I'm going to lose? You know? ah. I, <laughs> I train with him all the time. What's the point of signing the contract? A fight, a guy that beats me up in the gym. So that there is no point on that. On my mind, I'm the best fighter on the lightweight division. I can beat anybody. I just cannot beat Dustin Poirier. The rest, I can beat everybody in this division. Topuria and Volkanovski share wholesome moment. Ilya Topuria and Alexander Volkanovsky have engaged in a friendly exchange on Volkanovsky's cooking page. The two UFC fighters have shared positive comments and compliments, showcasing their respect for each other outside of the octagon. The wholesome interaction has brought a smile to the faces of fans who have appreciated the display of sportsmanship and camaraderie. Ilya tweeted, when will you invite me? Volk replied, our next fight? Maybe a paella after. Tapuria responded, done, I'll bring the wine. Tapuria's trash talk ends in knockout victory. Ilya Tapuria's trash talk paid off in a big way as he defeated Alexander Volkanovsky with a devastating knockout. The verbal exchange between the two fighters in the cage ultimately led to Tapuria's dominant victory, solidifying his status as one of the stars in the UFC. Ilya tweeted, when will you invite me? Volk replied, our next fight? Maybe a paya after. Ilya responded, done, I'll bring the wine. Conor McGregor shows off improved striking in new training video. Conor McGregor has released new training footage that showcases his improved striking skills. The former UFC champion has been working hard ahead of his upcoming fight. Tapuria, I dominate prime Conor McGregor. Ilya Tapuria, the rising Georgian star, just threw down the gauntlet. He's claiming he'd absolutely dismantle Conor McGregor in his prime. And not just in the stand-up, Tapuria says Conor's grappling game was always a weakness. This is a bold statement, but Tapuria's got the skills to back it up. Could we see this dream match in the future? Tapuria predicts Rachmanov dominance, Uzumin's return. Ilya Tapuria is dropping some hot takes. He's predicting a dominant win for Shavkat Rachmanov over Bilal Muhammad, calling Muhammad a fake champion. And as for Kamaru Uzumin, Tapuria thinks he's a lock to reclaim the welterweight title. It's bold, but remember, Tapuria's got a pretty good track record with his predictions. Bilal versus Shavkat. Shavkat. 
but Bella, he's a he's a fake champ. He's a fake, fake. I think right now in the welterweight division, the one who who will come back and will will take the belt again, it's it's Kamaru Usman, in my opinion. Easy work for for Usman. Topuria, Islam is a real champion. Bilal is a joke. Ilya Topuria is not holding back. He's calling Islam Mahachev a good champion and wants to test himself against him. But when it comes to Bilal Muhammad, Topuria's got nothing but disrespect, labeling him as a fake champion. This is shaping up to be a heated rivalry. Es un tipo que es un tipo duro, es es un buen campeón, es, es de los pocos ahora mismo que yo diría de que de verdad merece el 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 lugar donde tiene, es, es un buen campeón y por eso es que me gustaría compartir el octógono con él, no es como Belal. Muhammad Tapuria is the Georgian Colby Covington. Bilal Muhammad has heard enough from Ilya Tapuria. In response to Tapuria's fake champion comments, Muhammad is firing back, comparing him to Colby Covington. This is a classic case of trash talk, and it's only adding fuel to the fire for their potential matchup. Tapuria to welterweight, he tweeted, didn't this dork just buy a fake BMF belt to pose with? He's starting to become the Georgian version of Colby Covington. Tapuria responds to Muhammad's Colby Covington comparison. Ilya Tapuria has heard Bilal Muhammad's comparison to Colby Covington, and he's not backing down. Expect a fiery response from Tapuria, who is known for his trash talk, man. This rivalry is heating up. He tweeted, Bilal crotch sniffer Muhammad. Throwback, Tapuria and Hamzat were training partners. We've got a blast from the past. A new video has surfaced showing Ilya Topuria and Hamzat Chimaev training together when they were younger. It's a rare glimpse into the early careers of two of MMA's rising stars. This footage is sure to get fans talking about what could have been. Conor McGregor and Dan Hooker spotted together at BKFC event. Conor McGregor and Dan Hooker were seen chatting at a BKFC event in Spain. Could this be a sign of a potential match, or are they just catching up? Either way, this unexpected meeting has fans buzzing with speculation. Conor McGregor confirms February fight with Hooker in Saudi Arabia. Conor McGregor has confirmed that he's fighting Dan Hooker in February in Saudi Arabia. This is a match that fans might enjoy, and it looks like it's finally happening. Get ready for a fireworks show. What's your message? What's your message to Floyd? <laughs> Conor, do we have a date for the comeback yet? February 4th, Saudi Arabia. Who's the opponent? <laughs> Hooker wants Conor McGregor match, but will accept other offer. Dan Hooker is ready to run it with Conor McGregor. He's already been offered another fight, but he's making it clear that a Conor match is his top priority. This is shaping up to be a must-see matchup for fans. Like, I, know he, I know he needs to fight his contract out with the UFC. He's looking for an opponent. I'm, I'm ready to fight. As soon as I get back to New Zealand after this, I'm, I'll jump into training camp. So I'm good to go January. March next year. So it's like, man, if he wants to, if he wants to fight, like, oh, the UFC have already put good opponent in front of me. But obviously, if we can get that fight put together, we can get that fight put together. I feel like it's another big fight that the fans would like to see. You know, the opponent that you've had put in front of you, would that be? I'm not, I'm not asking who it would be. I'm not, I'm not that stupid. I know you're not going to give me an exclusive right like that. But would that be for like before the end of the year? Would that be for December? So oh, I can do, I can do January or March. The missus is dropping a baby in February, so that cannot. My no, no. cannot even even for McGregor. Even for McGregor, oh, sorry, my friend, <laughs> it can't be done. It can't. Hooker and Conor McGregor agree to fight. UFC needs to make it happen. Dan Hooker and Conor McGregor have reached an agreement to fight in February. Now it's up to the UFC to make it happen, and it's finally looking like it could become a reality. Pereira's sister dominates in MMA debut. Alex Pereira's sister just made a statement in her MMA debut. She knocked out her opponent, showing off some serious striking skills. It's clear that the Pereira family has some serious fighting talent. She's gonna be victory. Oh! Pereira's sister pays tribute to her brother after knockout. Alex Pereira's sister is clearly taking after her big brother. After knocking out her opponent with a powerful left hook, she said, that's the Pereira left hook. 
It's a great tribute to Alex and a sign of things to come for his sister's MMA career. Pô, esse cruzado é que corre no sangue da família? Sim, esse esquerdo é o dos Pereira. Ele me ensinou. Yeah, man, that's the Pereira last hook. My big brother, the one that showed me. Tapuria warns Holloway, your f Ilya Tapuria is not pulling any punches. He's sending a clear message to Max Holloway ahead of their upcoming fight. Tapuria is confident in his abilities and is ready to make a statement in the octagon. He tweeted, on my way to Abu Dhabi, Max Holloway, you're f Netflix drops trailer for new MMA series featuring Jones, Gain, and St. Pierre. MMA fans, get ready for a new binge-worthy series. Netflix has released the trailer for La Cage, a new show featuring some of the biggest names in the sport, including John Jones, Cyril Gain, and Georges St. Pierre. This looks like a must-watch for any MMA enthusiast. Left hand, right hand. Je veux devenir un champion, prendre des ceintures et rentrer à l'UFC. Les bons diplômes pour les bons tafs, pour les bons salaires, je les ai pas. Tout ce que je sais faire, c'est me battre. Et j'aime ça. Je sais que je peux faire de grandes choses, mais, mais pour ça, j'ai besoin de vous. Il faut vraiment que tu nous aides, là, mon fils, hein Tu leur dois combien, ces gars-là 40 000. Je sais, je sais que c'est dangereux, je... mais là j'ai pas le choix. Et moi je te le dis, je m'inquiète pour toi. Seul moyen de gagner vraiment beaucoup d'argent dans ce sport, c'est de devenir une star. C'est Ibrahim Ibar, le combattant le plus dangereux sur le circuit français actuellement. Je viens apporter un peu de lumière dans ton club de losers là. Et là, les gars, oh, une pause par une partenaire. Hey, tout le monde garde son calme, tu trouveras personne ici. T'as peur que je casse un de tes combattants fragiles Moi, je suis chaud, moi. Je vais le faire. T'es un peu le boulard, le gosse, là. Hein oh, vous êtes trop lourd, les gars. <rire> On a parlé avec ta mère. En vrai, t'as surtout plus de chances de perdre. C'est fou, c'est la première fois que je rencontre quelqu'un qui a sa propre statue. C'est légendaire. T'as aucune chance de gagner. Depuis le début, je crois que j'ai aucune chance de gagner. Sur le terrain, t'es mort, je te dis. We got two choices. You give up on all your dreams, or you gotta give it all you got. Left hand doing numbers, right hand doing work. So what is it gonna be? Left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand. That's what I'm talking about. Conor McGregor disrespects Tapuria's Spanish heritage. Conor McGregor is at it again. He's now claiming that Ilya Tapuria is not actually Spanish and is instead a Georgian man undercover. This is just the latest in a long line of disrespectful comments from Conor. So I won two big bets betting on Spanish athletes. So there you go, let's go Spain. I would say I would bet on Ilya Tapuria, but he is not Spanish, he is Georgian. Let's be real. I am a Spanish, if not more Spanish than Ilya Tapuria. He is a Georgian man undercover. He is operating undercover. So we support the real Spanish athletes. Conor McGregor calls out KSI over new song. Conor McGregor is not happy with KSI's new song. He's now challenging KSI to a fight, citing the song as the reason. This is a potential crossover fight that could be huge for both men. You called out KSI a few times. Could we ever see that fight down the line? Let's go, man. Any messages for KSI? I'll, I'll fight him for that bullshit song he released alone. I'll fight him for that fucking song alone. Prohaska versus Jamal is a match on the horizon. Yiri Prohaska and Jamal Hill have both been dropping hints about upcoming fight news. Could a match be in the works? Fans are eager to see these two talented fighters face off again, he tweeted. Good morning from Japan. Signed. Hooker, BMF tournament is like getting in two car crashes.
Dan Hooker is not a fan of Dustin Poirier's idea for a one-night, four-man BMF tournament. He compares it to getting in two car crashes in one day. While he's willing to participate, he's not underestimating the challenge. Nah. I think, like, yeah, it's a great idea. In one night, who's it? Dustin said one night? Yes. It's like getting in two car crashes in the same day, like. <laughs> yeah. You don't really want to do that. I would do it. If we're having a crazy off, I'm probably going to win that. Yeah. Are they talking to us or the dog? Sorry, yeah. everyone, this is a little disjointed. Well, uh, nah, they're uh, yelling at these other people. It's okay. not us. It's not us. Anyway, yeah, um, so unlikely to happen, but a fun idea. I'll do it. Like, <laughs> don't get me wrong. Don't <laughs> don't get in a crazy off of me, brother. I will out crazy anyone. Did you see a... Uh... Conor McGregor calls Tapuria a Spanish pretender, tells Holloway to f him up. Conor McGregor is continuing his war of words with Ilya Tapuria. He's now calling Tapuria a Spanish pretender and is telling Max Holloway to f him up. He is clearly trying to get under Tapuria's skin. I know Ilya Tapuria has had a lot to say, country. Yeah, this is in his home country. This is my home country, baby. My Bay of Spain, where is he at? This ain't his home country. He knows where his home country is, and it's not España. So, uh, good luck, Max Holloway. Up. Conor McGregor wants to run it back with Poirier and Diaz. Conor McGregor is not done with Dustin Poirier or Nate Diaz. He's expressed interest in rematches with both fighters, saying that their unfinished business needs to be settled. These potential fights would be huge for the UFC. But what would be more satisfying for you, getting a trilogy with Nate Diaz or the quadrilogy with Dustin Poirier? Both of them. Both is a must, for sure. You know, the Dustin one's not settled, it's 1-1-1. One, one, one. And the Diaz one is also 1-1. One, one. So, um, two big block blockbuster matches, and i would be excited to get them uh, locked in. Ankalaev, Rakic, is the toughest fight at light heavyweight. Magomed Ankalaev is not taking Aleksandar Rakic lightly. He's calling him the toughest fight in the light heavyweight division. This is a matchup that fans are eagerly anticipating, he tweeted. Just to be clear, Rakic is my toughest fight in the division. Figueiredo rejects UFC matchup with Sandhagen. Davison Figueiredo has turned down a UFC offer to fight Corey Sandhagen. Instead, Figueiredo is eyeing a matchup with Petr Yan. This unexpected move has thrown a wrench into the bantamweight division's plans. That's has there been any talk from the UFC about any opponents in general? Uh, not really. I told him after the last fight, I was like, hey, look, guys, like, uh, I just sat out for a whole year with an injury, so I kind of want to, you know, get back in there pretty soon. So they tried to match me and Figgy up in December. That was, I don't know, sometime last month. Um, Figgy turned down the fight, uh, wanted to fight Jan. I, I think that just, like, my frame is just a difficult one uh, to deal with in the sport. And then also, like, It I'm, is. It I'm, is at I'm, 135. Yeah, and I'm well-rounded, and you know, like I'm not like a uh, like a big shit talker guy. So I think that maybe guys think that it's gonna be not a big fight. But I think that now at this point in the UFC, I've established myself, especially in this division, which is one of the best ones, is one of the best guys that there is. And um, and you know, when I show up to fight, it's gonna be a good fight. So um, so yeah, I mean, they they said me and Figgy, Figgy turned it down. Can't really do much about that. So. There's really no one else to fight outside of that. I asked for Jan too, um, and they said that they were likely going to do Jan and Figgy because me and Jan had already fought. So, uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. It was either one of those two, right? There, there really isn't anyone else to fight. Henry's talking about going to 25. He says all kinds of shit all the time that uh, he sometimes follows he through with and then sometimes doesn't. So, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at, man. I feel like O'Malley's really the only guy to fight. Sandhagen prioritizes fan excitement, willing to wait for O'Malley. Corey Sandhagen is putting the fans first. He's expressed a willingness to wait to fight Sean O'Malley, saying that he wants to give the fans the matchup they're most excited to see. This shows a level of maturity and sportsmanship that is refreshing in the world of MMA. Comments, but you read all the comments, man, and uh, you talk to fans and you talk to people, and that's the fight that everyone wants to see happen. And I know Sean wants to wait to June. I'm actually kind of surprised that the UFC hasn't come to me or Sean hasn't said anything about that fight yet or anything and just asked, you know, like, hey, you willing to wait till June? Because I would entertain that big time because I think a big piece that I've really been able to appreciate lately in the sport is that uh, I really want to give the fans like what they're paying to see. And if it means waiting a little bit to fight in a fight where fans are most excited for, 
uh, you know, like I would definitely big time entertain that. I, I would rather not have it be all the way in June, but I mean, there's no better fight that you can make, man. Like me and O'Malley is just, it's a banger of a fight. Everyone knows it. You read all the comments. That's the only fight that people are asking uh, for me next and for Sean O'Malley next. So, Ganu's coach, he's boxing again, maybe even wilder. Francis Ngannou's coach, Eric Nixick, is confident that his fighter will return to the boxing ring after his upcoming fight. Nixick even hinted at a potential showdown with Deontay Wilder, which would be a massive crossover fight for the ages. So let's just say, hypothetically, Francis goes out and does the thing and mm -hmm. that we've all missed seeing him do over the past few years. He goes out there and gets a big win. Do you think it's another MMA fight or do you think we give boxing another shot? I think he boxes again. You know, I think he probably alternates back and forth. Um, you know, I just, I just know the his passion for boxing right now, and, and you know, obviously the paydays. So there's some fights that that, that they can make uh, for him, uh, especially if we can go off and go get a nice win in, in PFL, springboard him into something nice into boxing. I think he boxes again right away. You like Deontay? What do we think? I, lo I love that. I love that. Yeah, I love that. I mean, dude, they're all killers up there, but I think a name a name value boxer, definitely the, uh, Wilder, I think, is the, is the name that we, we go and try to fight. This is two two dudes that are going to wing it at each other, you know? They're going <laughs> to bomb. They're going to throw bombs, <laughs> you know? So let's just go up and watch these guys throw. Thanks for watching. Smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe.